The next topic is the one that creates most anxiety, most repeat visits, most emails, most phone calls, sizing. People are very anxious about choosing the right size and they go back and forth a lot, often very small amounts. So for example, I have here a 385 and a 365. 385, 365. And we can have patients going back and forth for weeks, can't decide which one should I go for. Tremendous amount of anxiety, people coming to the OR like, oh, which one should I go? I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I'm freaking out. Let me show you. Here we have two very similar implants. One is one step bigger than the other one, I think you can tell the difference. 385 high profile, 365 high profile. If you look at them, realize that they're about the same. The difference is that this bigger implant sticks up one millimeter more. This is one millimeter more this than this. So really, the difference in projection when you when you wear the shirt is not that much. But the difference is when you come look from above, you realize that the bigger implant is really more wider. It's more about width. This is narrower, this is a little bit wider than about projection. So when you're choosing a bigger implant, you can't you know, go back and forth between implants. Understand what you're deciding with is really the width, not so much projection. So when you take these two implants and you put them here and I look down, they stick out the same. The difference is that the bigger implant is a little bit wider, a little more side cleavage, side loop than this one. An important concept for everybody to understand is understand a breast augmentation augments your existing breasts. It doesn't give you new breasts, it takes what you have, makes it bigger. So if you have naturally wider breasts, you will have bigger, naturally wider breasts. Cleavage does not usually change. If you wanna address cleavage, what people sometimes do is to fat graft, add a little more volume to the middle to give you a better cleavage. But the implant really should be located where your breasts are. So when we choose implants, we wanna choose an implant that fits your breast, where we measure the width of your breast, we wanna choose an implant that fits you. If you choose something too small, it looks like a little nubbin in your chest. If you choose something big, you can, but then you get more of a side loop. Going bigger doesn't mean going more medial. So sometimes people wanna choose a bigger implant because they want more cleavage. The cleavage doesn't change if you're under the muscle because the muscle comes around, inserts into your sternal bone, acts like a, like a little, little gate. You can't go any more medial. So as implants get bigger, they don't get bigger into a tighter cleavage, they get fuller on the side, you get more of a side loop. If you decide to go over the muscle, you don't have the muscle acting like a little medial uh, gate, you are able to go a little bit closer. So people that sometimes have a wider cleavage and you wanna address that, you go over the muscle. That being said, understand, if you have a naturally wide set breast, if your breast is sitting here, to try to put an implant more medial to give you cleavage and to fake it is a bad choice because sure, implants can be sitting here when you wear clothes, you have a nice fullness here, but when you're naked, implants here, your natural breast didn't move, it's still here. So you'll have an implant that's kind of going this way. Also understand, but implants sit, ideally they should be centered on your nipple. So if your nipple is here, that's where the implant is. If your nipple is here, it's on this part of the implant. Now nipple, instead of pointing forward, is going sideways. So if you try to fake it, you're gonna get breasts that are really going sideways. So you're gonna actually exaggerate the displacement of your nipples. To explain that point again, if you have breasts that are naturally far apart, you place the implants where your nipples are. If the nipple is here, and the implants right there, if you come and look down, the nipple's pointing forward. If I try to fake it and place the implant more medial than it should be, the nipple will be on this part of the breast, and now it's gonna go and look sideways. Another question we sometimes get is, what implant size will give me a C cup or a D cup? understand how cup sizes are measured. So first of all, each store you go to is gonna measure you differently. You go to one store, they'll tell you a 34B, another store is gonna tell you a C cup or a D cup. There's great variability. So the letters don't really matter, the numbers don't really matter, but understand how this is done. The measurement is the difference between your chest circumference and nipple circumference. So it's the difference between circumference at your chest and circumference at the breast, at the nipple. The bigger the breast, the bigger the difference, the bigger the cup size. However, a D cup on me, being 6'1", would require a much bigger implant than on somebody who is, let's say, 5'1". A 5'1 person may end up with a D cup uh, just by getting a 300cc implant. Me, if I wanted to get a D cup, I probably have to go to 500cc, a big difference. The implant that may look great on one person is gonna look different on you because you have a different chest, different height, different breast shape, different amount of fat on top of the implants. So there's a million different variables.
it's the look we're trying to create. It's not really the number. So bring a picture of a breast that you like, allow the surgeon to decide what implant will take you there, what size, shape, and profile will be able to create that look in combination with your existing breast symmetry. Now, when you do your research before breast augmentation, people often go out there and find themselves pictures of women whose breasts they like. Very, very important point here. You need to find naked pictures, not pictures in clothes or bikini, because you don't really know what's going on. You know, somebody may have a breast that sits really low, but when they have a bikini, kind of pushes, or, or clothes, or bra, pushes it up and creates a completely different look. So when people wear clothes, you don't really know what's going on. Not a good idea. So the best place to look for pictures, wish pics, is to look at plastic surgery websites or websites that show plastic surgery pictures, such as Real Self, where you see before and after pictures, where the pictures are standardized. Also, you know, when you go on social media, you have, you have clinics posting pictures of their patient before, like a standardized picture, and then they get a selfie from a patient in a pose and different angles that really distorts the perspective. So for your research, please find proper standardized pictures straight head on or side views where you can see the before and after in the exact same position, exact same lighting. And one more thing, when you're looking for before and after pictures, try to find someone who looks like you in the before picture so you kind of see what happened to them. This is very important because people have a lot of different breast shapes, sizes. And if you find a wish pic of somebody who had no breasts to start with, but you have a C cup or a D cup, there's no way you're gonna look the same as somebody who started off in a very different spot. So find someone who looks like you. The other thing is, when you find someone who looks like you, you see what happened, and you may notice that maybe some people that kind of look like you don't just get a breast augmentation, maybe you also need a breast lift. And that's something to think about. Very, very important number two, people that get a breast lift with or without implants never look like somebody who only gets breast augmentation. So if you need a breast lift and you bring a wish pick of a breast augmentation, there's just no way we can create that look for you. So please understand that. Try to find good before and after pictures that look like you before and have standardized views. So you have realistic expectations. Again, people post all kinds of pictures out there. Posing everything else really distorts the perspective. Standardized plastic surgery pics. Okay guys, so thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, please feel to message us, leave a question in the comments below and keep watching.